Okay, so this is going to be about this George Santos, this congressman-elect um, uh, who the Republicans are not saying anything about all of his lies. So I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching, and Happy New Year. I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So just to say it again, Happy New Year. Thank you very much for watching. You really made it an, a wonderful year this year for me. All of you who watch and my, my uh, viewers who uh, comment regularly and give me suggestions on what to read for, I really do appreciate that. So this is going to be about George Santos, the guy who's lied about everything from uh, his mother dying to where he's gone to school. And I mean, you name it. I'm going to give you a little rundown uh, right here, but um, this is amazing. Okay, I'm just going to read through this that I got on a wiki. And so here we go. So in 2022, George Anthony DeVolder Santos is an American politician from New York State, a member of the Republican Party. And Santos was elected to represent New York's third con congressional district, which covers part of northern Long Island and east and northeast Queens after having run for the succeed unsuccessfully two years earlier. Now, a question about his background emerged in September when Long Island News publication the North Shore leader questioned his finances. In six weeks after the election, numerous news outlets began reporting that large parts of his self-reported biography appear to be fabricated, including claims about his ancestry, education, employment, charity work, and property ownership. Now, as of uh, late December, uh, he's under in investigation by federal, state, and county authorities. And there have been several judgments against Santos in eviction and personal debt cases in the United States. In 2008, he confessed to check fraud charges in Brazil, but did not, appear, did not appear in court and denied committing any crime and said he's not wanted in any jurisdiction anywhere in the world. Santos claimed that his maternal grandparents were Ukrainian Jews who fled to Belgium and then to Brazil to escape the Holocaust during World War II and that his mother was an immigrant from Belgium. The truth is that genealogical records and other evidence show that his ancestors have lived in Brazil for at least three generations and there's nothing to indicate they had any connection to Ukraine, have any Jewish heritage or Holocaust survivors. Santos' letter said he was Jew-ish. Santos has used the name Anthony Zabrowski to fundraise for a pet charity. Santos has also claimed that he was biracial and born to African-American father who had Angolan roots, but there's no evidence of that. On his campaign website, he wrote that his mother was the first female executive at a major financial institution, and she worked in the South Tower of the World Trade Center and died a few years later after surviving the September 11th attacks. His mother's actual occupation has been described as domestic worker and home home care nurse. In July 21, Santos stated on Twitter that 9-11 claimed my mother's life. In an October 21 interview, he said that his mother was caught up in the ash cloud during 9-11, but never applied for relief because the family could afford the medical bills. And then December 21, Santos stated on Twitter that his mother had died five years prior in December 22. I don't think this works out. And then uh, Santos claimed that both of his parents survived being down there at the World Trade Center during 9-11. Santos has said that he was born and raised in abject poverty. That may be the only thing that's true. A Catholic priest reported that Santos had told him the family could not afford a funeral when his mother died in 2016. The priest recalled that a collection at a memorial mass raised significant money, which he gave to Santos. And uh, Santos claimed in 2019 and 2020 to have attended the Horace Mann School, an elite preparatory school. The school reports it has no record of him. After obtaining a high school equivalency, equivalency diploma, Santos 
spent time in Brazil. In 2008, he was 19 and he stole a checkbook from a man in Brazil who was being cared for by his mother and wrote fraudulent checks and confessed and was charged with check fraud but did not respond to a court summons and Brazilian authorities told the New York Times that the case remains unresolved and in his post interview a week after the Times reported this Santos denied it. The Times noted that it had documentary records of the charges. Now Santos claimed to hold a bachelor's degree in finance and economics from Baruch College but the school has no record of this and the period he said he was at Baruch overlapped with his time in Brazil. He claimed to hold a Master of Business Administration from New York University, but NYU has no record of his attendance. And finally, in December 22, he told the Post, I didn't graduate from any institution of higher learning. I'm embarrassed and sorry for having embellished my resume. We do stupid things in life. Uh, from October 2011 to July 2012, he worked as a customer service representative at a call center for Dish Network in College Point, Queens. During this time, he told acquaintances and co-workers that his family was wealthy and had extensive real estate holdings in the U.S. and Brazil. And he repeated this during his 2022 congressional campaign, claiming, claiming that his family owned 13 rental properties in New York. No such properties were listed on his campaign financial disclosure forms or in public records. He admitted to the Post that the claim was false and he owned no properties. And then in September 2014, an acquaintance lent Santos several thousand dollars he said he needed to move in with his boyfriend. The acquaintance recalled that Santos had claimed to be a graduate of NYU's business school, but Santos did not seem to know that the school is commonly known as the Stern School. Uh, Santos refused to pay the money back. A judge later ordered Santos to repay it with interest, which he has not done. Uh, Santos said he founded a charity for rescue animals called Friends of Pets United in 2013 and ran it into 2018. He said the group was a tax-exempt charity, but the Internal Revenue Service has no record that the group was registered as a nonprofit organization. Friends of Pets United held a 2017 fundraiser event for New Jersey for a New Jersey animal rescue group, but the organizer of the rescue group said that Santos never gave it any of the proceeds. And Santos described himself as a seasoned Wall Street financier and investor and said he had worked for Citigroup and Goldman Sachs, but neither company has any record of him. Santos's uh, campaign website stated that he began working at Citigroup as an associate and quickly advanced to become an associate asset manager in the real uh, in the real asset division of the firm, but Citigroup sold its asset management division in 2005. Hmm. On a podcast, he claimed that while employed at Goldman, he attended the SALT Private Equity Conference seven years earlier. However, Anthony Scaramucci, member from Trump fame, uh, who runs the conference, said there's no record of Santos having sat on a panel or even having attended any SALT conference. Santos claimed employment at Citigroup. Santos's claimed employment at Citigroup overlapped his employment as a Dish Network customer service representative, and his claim that he had been employed there was a poor choice of words. That's what he says. Santos also claimed to have worked for Met Global, and by 2019 was working for LinkBridge Investors, eventually becoming a vice president according to his campaign disclosure form and a company document. Now, while running for Congress, he moved from Link Bridge, he says, to become a regional director at Harbor City Capital, a Florida firm the Securities and Exchange Commission subsequently accused of running a $17 million Ponzi scheme. Santos was not personally named in the lawsuit, nor were other colleagues of his, and he publicly denied any knowledge of the fraud. According to his financial disclosures, Santos was the sole owner and managing member of the Devolder organization, which he said was a family-owned company that managed $80 million in assets on financial disclosure forms. Santos called Devolder a capital introduction consulting firm. Although based in New York, the company was registered in Florida, where it was dissolved in 2022 for failing to file annual reports. And then during his 2022 campaign for Congress, Santos lent his campaign, where did he get this money, $700,000 and reported receiving a salary of $750,000 in dividends between $1 million and $5 million from DeVolder. All of that. Even though he also listed the company's estimated value uh, as the, in the same range. Despite his claims about the company's size, Santos's financial disclosure forms did not list any clients using the company's services. And in November 2022 interview, Santos discussed the Pulse nightclub shooting in Orlando, Florida, saying, I happened to, at the time, have people that worked for me in the club. None of the 49 victims slain in the attack appear to have been connected to any of the companies named in Santos's biography. Wow. 
let's pull some cards. It seems like this Toth deck is going to be perfect for this. I mean, it's a severe deck, and I think this calls for some, you know, some truth telling. So, George Santos. George Santos. What in the world um, has created these, these, these people who just crawled out from under these rocks ever since uh, Trump showed them uh, how it's done? So, and, and, and look at the guy. He looks normal. He looks like a nice guy. If you saw him on the street, even if you had conversation with him, I'm sure you'd feel like, oh, this is a decent fella. Um, until he started to spin his yarn. And then what is it that makes people willing to accept that? And why aren't uh, Republicans in that district that elected him uh, screaming in the streets for him to be uh, removed and not allowed to be in Congress? Why aren't the Republicans in Congress uh, saying, no, you can't be part of us? I don't know. But first, let's have a moment of meditation. We need it. Yep, so George Santos. Let's see. You know, I don't have pre-prepared questions for this. I'm just going to come up with them uh, as we go. But I think I'm going to let the cards decide. We'll start with six cards and see if we feel like it should go to a, a full Celtic cross. Six cards is a dyadic cross. Um, but um, And just ask questions. All of those questions. Uh, why aren't the Republicans standing up and screaming to get him out. Where's Mitt Romney? Where's Susan Collins? Where's, um, I forget the Alaska Senate uh, Congresswoman. Where are all these people? Why aren't they saying, get him away? Um, the constituents of that district, why aren't they uh, up in arms? Why aren't they uh, complain? <laughs> Let's see if the cards can, can answer those kind of questions. George Santos, we know he's just a deranged, uh, sick person. He's a uh, is it a psychopath or a sociopath? Um, good heavens! So, six cards to begin with, and we'll see what story the cards tell in that regard. Okay, so six cards. We go one, two, three, four, five. And then six. The George Santos situation. Why? Why? Okay. The signifier card for this. The Empress. That's interesting. So this is a major arcana. The Empress is a caring um, uh, card. This is nurturing. This is uh, wanting to, um, you know, give the very best uh, of, of a situation. So how can this be the, the signifier of this situation? I don't know. We'll have to see if we can put together this, this story as we go, I think. But the challenge to that Empress card in this George Santos situation, Congress, the people uh, who voted, the lovers. So the lovers tells us, and another major arcana, the lovers tell us, you know, this whole thing is leaning towards wanting to take care and believe uh, the best in people. The lovers card is finding that perfect pairing, the perfect match to, to uh, work through the issue. And we see it here in the perfect pairing in these two children, the perfect pairing in this, uh, this king and queen. Uh, we see that all of them have risen. You see, these are the outstretched hands of this one entity who um, uh, seems to be, um, you know, in, enthralled uh, by Cupid. So that's the challenge to this emperor. So the challenge to this nurturing, caring, I believe the people involved with this on the street level, I can't believe in Congress, but the people on the street level are looking for nurturing, caring answers. They're challenged by 
trying to move into that lover position by anyone who comes their way. They're almost desperate uh, to have uh, to have someone. Um, the base of this whole thing then is this ace of discs, this ace of pentacles. And this is a great big offer of value. This has to be the lies that he's given up. He's given just the most pristine example of who he is in his um, career, in his education, in his parents, in his life, in his heritage. He's given up this great big offer of, of, of who they is. And these folks who were just desperate to lap up some sort of nurturing have just taken it on. In the past of this, then, is the chariot. Well, this is obviously everything coming to a head very quickly. Um, is what has happened and in the sky of this reading with this queen of swords ah finally we have truth justice rules and law this queen of swords has risen up she's got the head of the offender in her hand she's waving that truth justice rules around and this is in the sky and thank god it is because this is what we would uh, um, hope for what we'd aim for what we hope that comes to our rescue this queen of swords and then the final outcome for why uh, Congress, the constituents, are, are letting this go on again is just this blind love. Look at this. This is the Two of Cups. The Two of Cups is in the typical uh, right of weight deck, can, to me, signifies almost an oath taking. And so the Two of Cups indicates that I think there's going to be some oath taken here. Uh, it looks like he will be allowed to get to that point. Let's get uh, four more cards and see if we can figure out some answer to this. So why? Why is Congress, why are the people in the street letting this go on? The very self of that question is a knight of cups. So it's a knight is a fighter of compassion. And you can see in this card, here's the knight. He's holding up that cup. It's got a little surprise in it. He's a winged warrior, really charging forward. And um, they're just willing to fight for that compassion that they want, that they need. Um, and what's the environment that that's in? The environment that that's in is swiftness. So this is the eight of wands the eight of wands wands are actions plans forward movement and this is the eight of wands things happening at a rapid pace these are jagged a uh, lightning bolt uh, almost destructive looking uh, actions and so at least this desperate um, need for something for this emotional compassion to fill that cup is is at least in the environment of this eight of wands of a lot of things uh, coming forward uh, at the same time. The hopes and the fears for this, okay, ah, finally is power. This is the uh, Four of Pentacles, and you can see it here represented in this fortress, okay? So the Four of Pentacles are laid out here as the um, uh, the towers uh, to protect this, this fortress, okay? So the hopes and the fears is that we find a way to hold on to our value, our true value. Okay, and then the final outcome of this whole thing with this George Santos disgrace is uh, the Ten of uh, Wands, which is oppression, a hard, hard uh, battle to fight. And, um, and so hopefully this is the downfall of this guy. And, uh, and hopefully these people so we'll read it all again. So the question I have is why is Congress, why are the constituents, why isn't everyone besides the news outlets uh, screaming for this uh, to be rectified? Well, we start out with the Empress looking for a nourishing, nourishing uh, uh, someone to take care of us, someone to um, to to be in our best interest. And it's challenged by the lover's card, which is still more of that searching for that perfect pairing, you know, wanting Cupid to let go of that arrow and shoot it and give us some sort of a respite. But the, the base of the whole thing with this ace of discs is this great big offer of value that they've been offered up. They've been given the perfect resume, the perfect background, the perfect life story. And in the but in the past of this is that this, with this chariot, everything has come to a head quickly, 
now. And in the sky of this, with this queen of swords holding the head of the offender, waving truth and justice and rules and law in her other hand, uh, this is what we're aiming for. And it looks like this is what we're getting. And then the final outcome being love again, the two of cups, but not in a major arcana way. This is in uh, the two of cups where I believe there's usually some oath taking taking place. And this is telling me that probably this guy is going to get sworn in. Um, the uh, very self of that question as to why with this Knight of Cups is that these people, these people here are just willing to fight for this emotional, compassionate need that they have. But thankfully, it's in the environment of all of these issues in this Eight of Wands coming up as a, like lightning bolts into this situation. Wake up, hear the thunder, see the lightning, be scared, run for cover. And then the um, hopes and the fears with this Four of Pentacles is the protection of that value. Okay, holding on to that value. Thank God that's in the hopes uh, column and uh, or position. And then with the final outcome being this Ten of Wands, this hard, hard uh, push, this hard bundle to carry, These all of these actions, it's just too much and uh, it will collapse, um, thankfully. So that's what we got. Well, I hope that gave you a little more insight into the psyche of this uh, psycho. <laughs> Let me know what you think and tell me what you want me to read about because you know, I'll read on it. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Okay, so these are the Toth Tarot deck, Alice, Alistair Crowley, and these are from US Game Systems. And uh, these cards are pretty amazing. Um, some like to use them if they've got kind of a severe uh, subject uh, that they think needs uh, um, you know, a very direct uh, answer to them, in, in, uh, not a, a flowery answer. The guidebook is very useful, as a matter of fact. It's easy to read, and it's got some interesting uh, uh, information here on the um, author of the card and the painter of the cards, and uh, with some uh, collaboration. So I'll just read this one little thing. This is by Lady Frida Harris, who actually painted these cards, and she says, Arthur Crowley's Toth Tarot Deck the tarot could be described as God's picture book, or it could be likened to a celestial game of chess, the trumps being the pieces to be moved according to the law of their own order over a checkered board of the four elements. I love that. That's a very insightful way. If you think of the artist using that as her guiding light to designing the cards, that's that's pretty awesome. Uh, the cards themselves are are easy to read if you read the cards. In other words, if you don't impose your uh, predetermined notion of what a particular uh, card is supposed to mean, uh, like I often do, because I'm very much like the Rider Waite system, but these Toth cards are amazing. What happens here is that um, they tell you here in a, I don't know if you can see it, but in the background you see this tells you this is Wands, and of course this is the Prince of Wands, and then the um, the Major Arcana, they show them in the very faintly you see here it says Trumps, and uh, then this tells you this is Art. So they're not exactly the same uh, order of divination as the Rider Waite system, but not far off. And if you take a minute to familiarize yourself with, the, with how they uh, are ordered, then I think you'll be okay. And I'd just like to give you this chance to look at all these cards spread out in case you don't get a chance to see a, a lot of tarot cards. Um, maybe you're thinking about buying some cards and this would help you make a decision for or against these. They're a little big, so they're awkward to use, but once you get used to them, then that's fine. Just like anything, once you get used to using them, um, you know, you acclimate yourself to the system. So this is the Aleister Crowley Toth deck. Love these cards, actually. Well... Coming back tomorrow, I'll be doing it all again, so ciao for now. You really make a big difference. Thank you.